Hello and welcome back to the Old Realms, and I'm just going to buy this smithy. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now, because obviously the caravan might very well just get absolutely murdered by the huge amount of bandits in the area. We could try it. That's the point. We could try it, and I think I will try, because I do have a significant amount of cash, as you can see right there. I've got 75k, so it's not going to be that painful if we end up losing the caravan, but I am going to buy this smithy for 24,000 just because it is in a vampire town. Kind of makes sense. And otherwise, I'm going to form a caravan as well. Maybe I want to field it with better troops as well. Maybe that would be a good idea. Oh, actually, you know what? I can't even do that because I need to recruit another companion to be able to do that. Yeah, because I don't actually want to let Belinda go because she's going to be, uh, I, I think, a pretty cool companion to have with us right now. So I don't really want to, you know, have her leave. Anyway, um, yeah, there's actually something that I wanted to say thank you very much for. And that was for reminding me about the civilian clothing. As you can see, I've already done it. Um, but basically, in the Old Realms, every single companion has two sets of gear. And so if you want to, you can go onto their civilian set. And you can just take exactly the same armor and then put it on their regular armor. And so basically I've got two sets of armor for, well, for 20,000, which obviously is not that expensive. So it's actually really good because you've also got a companion on top of that. Anyway, as I said in the previous episode, I was going to do a whole bunch of auto resolves. As you can see, I have. I'm actually almost at 150. And I'm very much hoping that we'll be able to get that in this one. So what I'm actually going to hope for here is maybe we can do like a, a task or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go because let's face it, you know, doing a task, it sometimes doesn't really work out too well. I'm um, kind of hoping for like a hideout here or something, but I'm also high. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, uh, no, they split off. Mm. You are absolutely infuriating, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping that they'd actually go and, um, you know, follow their other friends over the bridge. Because if they followed them over the bridge, we may have been able to get a uh, group of 16 and 17 into the battle at the same time. These, these um, Beastmen warbands, they move so incredibly slowly. I think it's probably because they're all... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, actually, why do they... Why, why do they move so slow? Because the uh, the deserters don't move slowly at all, but maybe it's because there's not that many in the in, in the uh, in the army, potentially. But anyway, I'm just going to do an auto-resolve here. As I said before, auto-resolving is um, far and away the best when it comes to fighting bandits, at least at the moment, unless I wanted to level myself up. You've got to bear that in mind. If I wanted to level myself up, then I would be going in, in there and uh, trying to do some damage with my spells and... Um, actually, just a note on what I've actually done. I did level up. I'm actually almost level 9, so we probably want to go into some fights. And I put a stat point into Discipline, because we need it to level up Spellcraft, obviously. And I'm very much hoping that we'll be able to put another focus point in something else. I put a focus point in Leadership, by the way, because I kind of feel like Leadership is going to be super important for us, or is that just me? I'm not entirely sure, but gaining plus 50% renown from battles, that's definitely going to be coming in mighty handy as we go forward here. And can I just, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm actually disorganized at the moment still, so that's that's a bit irritating, but yeah. If I get, ooh, hello there. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of thing I want to go into a battle with. And I actually leveled up. What did I level up from? I guess scouting skill? Yeah, I guess scouting skill is leveling up quite a bit. So maybe what we want to do is actually <laughs> put a point into scouting. Ugh, do we actually want to do that? Yeah, sure, we'll put a point into scouting because it is pretty handy to have. And I don't think, wait a minute, let me actually just take a quick look here. Is she actually good at things? What is she good at? No, she's not good at anything apart from engineering and she only beats me by six. So she's very much a combat companion, which is completely fine. But um, actually before we go in here, I'm just gonna save real fast. I haven't saved for a while. So, you know, just a, a good idea to keep that, um, you know, a little, bit, uh, a little bit careful, a little bit careful. And otherwise, apart from that, we're good. Yeah, we're good. We should be fine here. Um, we just gotta, just gotta be careful. You gotta make sure that I um, cast my skeletons in the appropriate manner. And obviously, I do have quite a lot of cavalry now. I have 21 cavalry. Eh, I wouldn't say that's 
I mean, it's not a lot, but I would say that it's a good amount, especially for this point in the game. We're not really going to be struggling too much in these field battles because we can literally just go and murder as much as we like. And uh, yeah, actually my skeletons should be able to do some pretty good damage here. I'm just gonna throw a spell, boom, there we go, nice. And maybe we can throw a couple of other spells as well. Oh, look at that, I already have my mist form charged, which is hilarious. That was super fast. And uh, that just goes to show that if you hit people, I mean, look at that, we only did 44 damage, but you've also got to bear in mind that that damage is only so low because I'm not actually using any spell casting equipment. And also I'm using the lowest level spell that you can possibly get in the entire game. So obviously, you know, it is not going to be doing a massive amount. But later on, we're going to be getting some amazing spells. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm hopeful that maybe what I'll be able to do is now that I am at 50. Am I at 50 spellcraft actually? I think I am, right? I think I might be. Anyway, I'm going to be um, very quickly going over there in just a moment. We're, we're getting a lot of, yeah, we're getting a lot of renown. I like this. I like this. Okay, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to be taking any skeletons right here. Um, there's actually not too much point in taking skeletons right now. The only thing I could possibly think of in regards to using them for some decent purpose is to donate them into the garrison nearby. But I don't know if that actually does anything, because in the base game, and generally when I have done that kind of donating before, it actually doesn't really do much for me, unfortunately. It does do a little bit in regards to gaining some relation with people, and it does give you a small amount of influence, but other than that, mm, I don't really know whether it's worth it. Anyway, the art of the blade. As you continue your travels along a meandering road, the soft whispers of the breeze accompany your every step. Suddenly, the rhythmic beat of approaching footsteps captures your attention. Glancing up, you spot a mysterious figure approaching with confident strides. As they draw nearer, the glint of a finely crafted rapier catches your eye. The stranger stops before you, a warm smile on their face as they appraise you. Ah, what a stroke of luck to meet a band of worthy warriors on this lonely path, they say. I am Vittorio de Luca, a master of the blade from the distant lands of Tylea. I have journeyed far and wide, seeking a worthy adversary who can match my skills in combat, and now fate has led me to you. Care to prove your skills in a friendly duel with a little wager to make it exciting? <laughs> Ah, uh, he wants me to... No, 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 no. Yeah, yes, okay, fine, we'll do it, we'll do it. Intrigued by the proposition, you return their smile, curious about the stakes they propose. A duel with a wager, I'm listening, you reply, open to the idea. The duelist's eyes sparkle with anticipation as they explain the terms. If you win, I shall offer a sum of 5,000 gold coins as a testament to your skill. Should I prove triumphant... I ask for nothing more than the honor of having tested my skills against yours. With a gleam of excitement in your eyes, you accept the duelist's challenge, and a determined smile crosses your face. Very well, you say. I accept your offer, Vittorio de Luca. Let us make this duel one to remember. As your fellow warriors cheer in support, you order them to make camp by the roadside, turning the clearing into an impromptu arena. With the arena ready, you step into the center, your heart pounding with anticipation. Your fellow warriors gather around, forming a circle to watch the contest. Their expressions a mix of excitement and pride. All right, <laughs> here we go. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. This. Uh, oh, oh, he. Oh, okay. Wait, no, no. Are you? He has insane athletic skill. Just so you know, um, his athletic skill is utterly barbaric. There is no way I will be able to beat this guy in a million years, not with my current um, skill level, at least. Oh, <gasps> I landed a hit on him. I landed it. Okay, wait, wait. He actually doesn't do that much damage. Maybe because I have such an amazing weapon. Oh, I can't believe that he moved away from me too fast there, right there. Okay, I'm actually dealing damage to him, if you can believe it. Okay. Oh, oh, what? How did I land a hit? I have no idea how. He's actually... Wow, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. We might actually be able to do something here because he doesn't actually have a weapon that does too much damage. And if I can actually... 
Maybe I can just try to feint him a little bit. Oh, nice. Look at that. That was a wonderful thrust right there. Just to kind of... Um, <laughs> lucky. <laughs> that was lucky. Oh, there we go. There we go. We're actually landing some hits because I'm changing the direction of my hit. Oh, he actually does massive damage. Unfo unfortunate. Yes. I think I actually almost had him. Uh, did I? Did I? No. I think I probably got him to about 50%. So, yeah. That was... Not great, but there you go. I mean, did anyone really expect me to win that? No, I don't think so, right? No, I don't think so. Anyway, as the duel concludes, the air is thick with a mix of emotions. Your fellow warriors watch in silent respect as Vittorio De Luca, the renowned Tylean duelist, emerges victorious from the fierce contest. Fierce contest, even. You step back, acknowledging his skill with a nod of admiration. Vittorio stands at the center of the makeshift fighting pit, his rapier gleaming in the fading light a victorious smile gracing his face. A formidable opponent indeed, he says, his voice carrying a sense of pride in his achievement. You fought valiantly, but this time the victory is mine. Vittorio De Luca bids your band a respectful farewell. His graceful demeanor and the elegance of his words remain unchanged, despite the outcome of the duel. All right. Well, obviously we don't need the cash, but it would have been cool to win because maybe he would have actually given us something else. I mean, you never know whether he's actually going to give you something else. Maybe there would have been some kind of bonus or whatever. But yeah, from from my perspective, I'm pretty happy with how that went, surprisingly enough, because I literally thought when I saw his movement speed, I thought to myself, this guy must literally have like, I don't even know what, 600 athletics or something or 800. I don't even know how much, but he must have had a huge amount. And I'm just thankful that I survived that long, to be honest. Anyway, hello there, sir. Oh, you only want 15,000? Okay, yeah, join me. So, <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's take a look at this dude's gear real fast, just to make sure that he's not actually missing out on... Well, we're not missing out on anything. Like, for example, we could get this helm. We'll give him this hat. There we go. It looks like a cowboy now. That's absolutely wonderful, isn't it? Anyway, I'm just going to be wearing this, of course, as you might expect. This is obviously much better than what I had on beforehand. He has no horse, which is a, a bit weird. I gotta say, that is a bit weird. So I'm gonna give him a horse, but he doesn't actually have a saddle. So I should probably get him a saddle as well. Here's the thing. I kind of want him to be our caravan master. So that's the reason why I'm doing this. Uh, let me just buy a, <laughs> well, a, some, a somewhat good saddle. All right, a somewhat good saddle. Nothing too, nothing too bad. Cause let's face it, we don't want to give him anything too bad. Although his, his hat is really, really bad right now. But yeah, whatever the case. Um, yeah, let's actually speak to... One of these people right here. And we'll get some good, good troops, okay? We'll get some good troops. And this is just going to be a test, all right? This is going to be a test and see just how good a caravan is going to perform when I'm not eliminating any hideouts. Because here's the thing. Generally, what I'm doing right now is avoiding doing anything in regards to eliminating hideouts or eliminating anything that prevents the spawn of bandits because if I actually kill this deserter hideout right here then I'm gonna have to venture just that much further away to be able to well kill them and we don't really want to do that I'd like to have them right on my doorstep I mean yeah usually that's not a very good idea but for this purpose for the purpose of me going in here and farming some renown here and there yes this is an absolutely wonderful idea. And also, look at the amount of money that I'm going to be getting from this as well. And you see my you see my HP? Did you see my HP go up right there? I was literally at, I think, 17%, and then I was at 40%. So, yeah, preventive medicine, absolutely fantastic skill. Really, really useful. Kind of hoping that I can find some larger parties here. Maybe we can get some people over here. Mm, I'm kind of hoping for a band of 41 again. I'm actually not entirely sure how we... Oh, well, how they even amassed that amount of troops, but, well, I guess we can just do a, a little bit here and there. I mean, basically, you know, it's easy enough for us to achieve victory against them, and we're not going to be losing too many forces either in the process. Um, but yeah, what we do need to do is actually go over here. There are, of course, noble troops available in um, in these villages that are tied to castles. We know that, obviously. We've done that in many, many series over the course of the last few years. And here we go. Oh, this is... Ooh, now this is a fun one. I like this. All right, so let's actually have a look here. Armor weight, weapon handling. I'll go for armor weight so that I can actually run around relatively quickly. We're not there yet. 
Ah, uh, we're not there yet. I've got four career points to spend. I am, I am itching to spend my points right now. Really, really badly. Super, super eager to do that. Um, but yeah, let's actually have a look. Okay, so I need another, what is it? Um, 20, wait, uh, 17 even. <laughs> 17, yes, indeed. All right, so let's actually go in here. This is going to be cool. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my spellcraft up a little bit as well. Bear in mind that spellcraft is, of course, going to get huge power boosts when and if... I'm able to learn some more advanced spells. So I'm probably going to be heading on over um, after I get to tier two. Uh, I obviously don't know whether this is actually going to provide us with anything substantial. I don't know whether getting tier two, I mean, obviously it's gonna unlock dark magic for us, which of course is pretty cool, you know, it's gonna be pretty cool. So if we can get dark magic, then maybe there's gonna be a spell in there that we're going to be really happy to use, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm just going to go for a wonderful little magic bolt here just to start things off, because let's face it, that's going to be super easy, free damage for us. And let's actually tell my forces to charge in, oh dear. Well, this is not the best idea, is it? No, this is not really not the best. Okay, well, whatever the case, boom, yeah. Throw that, throw that thing at the opponent and hopefully do a little bit of damage. And uh, yes, that actually uh, brings me to the next point. I would love to be able to use my Mist Form more, but I don't think it does damage, right? I don't think it does damage. I should probably look at the tooltip again and actually see what's going on with it, because let's face it, you know, if it does do damage, then we should probably be using it just that much more, but I think it's more of kind of like an escape tool and maybe a thing that you can use to get your, um, get your Winds of Magic back, because as far as I'm aware, that is a, um, that is a, a kind of utility that you get from the skill later on when you have slightly more um slightly more uh what is it now renown and, and level ups and so on and so forth for it um but yeah we're as i say we're not going to be taking any skeletons here because i'm just going to be attempting to recruit as many noble troops as possible because let's face it we've got a good amount of cash right now i mean obviously not right now i mean it's going down pretty quickly because we've just recruited a companion bought a workshop got a caravan up and running with the best possible stuff and obviously we uh, also recruited some people from here too so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go over to this other place over here Scouting just got to 25, so I should probably level that up. Um, let's increase our travel speed during the daytime, because our travel speed during the night is already fantastic, so I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, let's just recruit some more of these guys. I, need, I actually need to buy some horses, don't I? So let me actually buy some of those as well. Okay, let me see here. Okay, cargo within capacity, so I'll just buy some mules, buy some of these guys. There we go, that seems pretty decent, and then there we have it. All right, so I've got 5,000 remaining. That shouldn't be too bad. Let's go into a battle against these fellows. Just going to auto-resolve against them. That is super, super easy. Those fellows literally just have nothing on us. And obviously, because I have a significant amount of cavalry, it is making a, uh, well, pretty big difference to how effective we are in these auto-resolves. But anyway, let's go into here because we are going to be getting a massive amount of cash. Hopefully, they have a huge amount of cash for me. Um, because this is going to be uh, pretty crazy. So yeah, look at that. Look at that. 20,000... 32,000, and we can even use this pole arm if we want to. Do we want to, though? That's the question. Do we want to? Maybe? Maybe it's cool? Maybe it's cool to use a pole arm? Yeah, why not? We'll do that. And then we'll just sell the rest. And there you go. We're getting 43,000. Obviously, there's even some more stuff over here in the trade goods area. So I should probably sell that too, all things considered. So let's actually do that. Look at this. We're gaining even more now even more that's crazy so there we go Forty-nine thousand in one fell swoop yeah as i say the beginning of the mod very punishing right very punishing unless you can uh, you know avoid bandit parties super super fast because let's face it i ended up taking a quest that caused me to have herding problems so of course you know i was going to have some pretty big issues with it forgot to sell my prisoners as well what an imbecile anyway we're going to be going back there in just a second and selling them but yeah anyway what i'd recommend is if you start playing this mod alongside me don't take any herding quests. I think I said that in a previous episode as well. So yeah, just don't don't take any herding quests. Not unless you are very, very, you know, uh, confident, shall we say, confident in your ability to win against any bandit parties that you come up, up against. Because let's face it, if you're going to start the game, you're probably going to have, you know, tier one troops and 
a bandit party of the, you know these beast men for example they have like 30 or 40 troops and you only have well probably not that then yeah it's probably going to be a good idea Okay, anyway, I'm going to go for Heroic Leader, I think, because 10% battle morale penalty to enemies when troops in your formation kill an enemy. But that is only if we are the captain of that formation. So I'm not sure if that's particularly useful at the moment. Maybe we want to go for the plus 5 party size, because at the moment my, my party size... I mean, oh, it's actually 130, because... Oh, did I reach level 2? I think I must have reached level 2. Okay, so that's really, really nice. And we've actually just gained a level as well. Okay, wow, we are... We are really doing very, very nicely here. And look at this. We can just... Yeah, that is so, so nice. We've got even more prisoners coming in as well. Actually, I can take these guys now because we have so much space. And what I should probably do is just go on over to the nearby... Where's the village? Oh, I just passed by it. I'm an idiot. Okay, there you go. Got it, got it. Yes. Get it. Go. Get them. Oh, no. Don't force them to give you supplies. I don't need those. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. So anyway, um, we are now tier two, right? Yes, yes. Okay, that's fantastic. Wonderful. So now what we're going to do is I will learn some new spells. I am so excited about this. Really, really excited about this because it's been a while since I've played the mod. Obviously, it's been, I, I believe, over a year since I played the previous version. So I am super excited to see exactly what has happened with the spells, if they've been changed or if, um, if more have been added. I have no idea, but I absolutely loved using them beforehand anyway. So, you know, I'm perfectly happy with that. Anyway, let me just see if we can get to the daytime. Actually, not entirely sure. Where do we... Oh, this is the fellow that we need to speak to. Oh, I'm in... Uh, okay. I, uh, you know, sometimes I just get too excited and then I just completely miss where I need to go. But yes, we know where we need to go. We need to go and speak to the Magister himself. I thought I'd have to go into the castle or something like that, but no, that is not what we need to do. All right, here we go. Do I know you? What do you need? Be quick. I am busy. Okay, so do you sell any scrolls? I've come seeking further knowledge. Here we go. All right, so I now have... Uh, do I have dark magic? Yes, here we go. So I have dark magic. This is unfamiliar lore. Okay, wait a minute. Is that because I haven't spent any of my career points? That could be the case. Okay, well, all of these are absolutely insane, as you can quite clearly tell. I. What do we want, though? I'm wanting a screaming skull dripping with acid that moves forward, damaging everything in its path. Yes, this is what I want. Um, I want this as well. The caster tears down the walls between realities and a black cloud of roiling energy sweeps across the battlefield as the darkness travels. Slimy tentacles lash out from its depths, dragging unfortunate victims screaming to an unknown fate. That sounds very pleasant indeed. However, I think I will go for the screaming skull thing first. However, I can't currently do that so i'm gonna to need to learn the lore first okay so let me just see if i can do that real fast so if i go into my career screen obviously there's so many extra systems that i'm gonna to need to get more familiar with and everything and you know it's a bit um so it can be a bit overwhelming you know it can be a bit overwhelming anyway here we go so as you can see there's a bunch of different ones here so we have the opportunity to have a look at this. So Mistform scales with Spellcraft and recharges Winds of Magic. One per second. That's incredible. That means that you can literally use this and you can gain back your mana to be able to cast more. Requires extra 40% damage dealt. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Mistform is recharged on Battle Start and also scales with Roguery. Whoa, okay. Killing blows in the head. Wow. Replenish three winds of magic. Okay, that, that is actually super, super useful. Okay, increase positive relation gains. And Mistform heals three HP per second. Party size increased by 75. What? That's insanity. Okay, that is absolute insanity right there. I am probably going to be taking two points in Lordly. Two points in Lordly, and then we'll go for uh, probably... Yes, yes, this is it. This is it. We'll go for three points in the Arcane. There we go. That is what I like to see. All right, so yeah, I am very, very pleased about this. Oh, so nice. Um, yeah, so I'm not entirely sure about the lore of the Dark Magic. I think maybe... Ah, uh, yeah, you know, we need to get to 75 to have access to Adept level spells. We, we don't currently have the ability to do that. And this is my spell book right here. So it says that I can learn. Can learn this. 
Oh, okay. So is that because I, now, I have now spent my career points? I assume so, right? I assume so. Anyway, let's have a look. See here, leadership. Probably want to get some more leadership. Probably want to get more scouting. Let's get some more scouting while we're at it. And then we'll go into the Magister and have a look. See here once again. He is going to be really annoyed with me because I'm consistently saying hello to him. All right. So, uh, yeah, I don't have enough caster level to be able to get this. You need master spell tier to get this. So uh, what do I want? I actually want this. A black cloud looms over the targeted area, striking those below with arcane lightning bolts. I want this really badly, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to get that. So I will have to level up just that much faster. So let's see. Shadowy orbs of blood fly towards the target, standing the ground beneath. Okay, that's a missile. And we got this. How much damage does this actually do? It does 40 damage. And does it actually say how much this other stuff does? It doesn't. Okay. I don't know how much any of this other stuff does. So I will just learn... I guess I'll just learn Shadow Blood. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll learn this. There we go. Okay, so we learn that. And then we can move on. And we'll try that out. Because I just want a spell that is going to be slightly more effective at dealing direct damage. Obviously, the missile is not bad at all. It's actually fine. But it is... Hmm... Um, not doing as much damage as it possibly could for us. And so I'm kind of hoping... Oh, this is perfect. Hello. We will... This is what... Do you see how fast we're traveling? We're traveling so fast now. I can't believe that. Yeah, because they, they literally give you a, a thing that allows you to move 1.5 movement speed faster. 1.5. Yeah, that is insanity because literally, you know, if you think about how much horses actually provide you, um, if you have every single one of your infantry on a horse, it, it barely, it doesn't even give you one, right? It doesn't even give you 1.0. So this literally giving me 1.5. Oh, so nice. I love it. I love it. All right. So let's actually have a look here. So here's Shadow Blood. Let's see how this works. I, I have no idea how it works, by the way. So I'm probably going to miss the first one, but let's have a look and see what we can do. Okay, wow. Um, that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, that, that was pretty fun. All right. Um, yeah, don't kill me, please. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's just uh, go and summon my skeletons. I'll just send everyone in here. And we'll just use Magic Bolt once again against these guys. Can I hit someone? Yes. Nice. Oh, we actually got a bunch of kills. Nice. That's really going to help with our spellcraft, hopefully. And uh, we'll, we'll use Shadow Blood again in just a second. Let me see if I can do something here. Boom. Okay, did that actually... Does that actually do anything? I think it does. Because I'm at 75, 74 Spellcraft actually now. So that must have done something good, right? I mean, surely. Oh well. Yeah, I have no... Um, <laughs> well, shall we say I have none of, the, uh, none of the abilities in the career points menu that give me Winds of Magic back. So that's going to be a bit of an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well. Never mind. I'm actually literally one point away to get Adept. Oh, no. Oh, I really need that. I want the Bombardment spell. The, the Bombardment spell is going to be so incredible for, for those times when enemies are literally just standing there in a big clump. And you can literally just walk up to them and just go, boom, you are all dead. Or, well, most of them at least. Or that's the, that's the hope anyway. I'm not entirely sure if that's actually going to happen. But let's just, let's just hope that we can get a good amount of experience with that. Otherwise, apart from that, getting to master level difficulty uh, spellcasting is going to be our main goal going forward. And that means that I should probably move on to fight slightly harder enemies. Because um, I'm not sure if the Chaos Gate is still up. Is the Chaos Gate still a thing? Anyone played the, uh, the this version of, of the mod? Because I, I don't know whether the, uh, the Chaos Gate is still around. Because basically, uh, if you don't know the previous version of the Old Realms... Oh, by the way, there's... Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the map, by the way. I haven't actually shown you the map yet. I feel bad about that. Oh, well, never mind. Anyway, as you can see, there's Britannia right there. Absolutely insane increases to the amount of map space there were. Oh, wow. I remember playing the previous version, and I, I believe that... I think they went all the way to... Um, 
I'm actually not entirely sure. Here? I think around here they stopped. And then this entire area is completely new. And I, I don't think I remember anything else about some of these places. So they must have added a huge amount since the last time I played. So that's incredible. Anyway, as I say... Um, yeah, there's a chaos gate or some kind of, um, you know, portal, chaos portal or something like that. And it basically has a bunch of um, chaos armies spawning out of it. And it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy for um, experience gain and, and um, money and all that wonderful stuff. So it's definitely going to be useful for us. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to doing that. Anyway, I'm just going to continue trying to recruit as many nobles as I can. Obviously, I'm at 74 Spellcraft, but I will be at 75. I am, however, going to be ending this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.